Chris Pons. Leader fan. Fan Radio Network. Frustrating. And KFAN. Dot com. One minute. No, that's actually two minutes and 25 seconds past the hour of 3 o'clock Central Daylight Time. Did you start the clock right at 3 o'clock? Brett Blakemore, did you blow it already? That's not my uh, job to get oh. there right at 3. That oh, is the, I see. the show before Oh, so us. you're going to throw, you're going to throw Tana B under the bus is what you're going to do. That's right. Okay, yep. that's fair. Uh, you hear the voice of Brett Blakemore because Garzy is out today. Uh, Garzy will be Attending at least for five minutes, he claims the uh, root party tonight at the Forgotten Star Brewing, and um, he also did join me earlier today to tape the latest submission in the ongoing Enough Said television series on Fox Nine, which you can see on the Plus at seven thirty and Fox Nine at nine thirty um, as well. If we're lucky, um, it'll be on all the TVs. At Forgotten Star Brewing on both of those occasions. Will you be making a trip to that location later? I will. Okay, good. It'll be fun. We're all going to be there. By the way, um, there is an incentive. If you're interested, if you're going to be attending tonight's event, um, and you'd like to submit a Dr. Dan entry, email Garzy, JG, at KFAN. Dot com with a, for a chance to win um, Metallica tickets, and I think it's a two hundred dollar uh, gift card as well. One of those is it is it uh, one of those? I don't want to say whether it's Visa or Master because I'll just say I think it's Visa. Actually, come to think of it, so um, get your submissions into Garzy, but you have to be there tonight. So if you're not going to show up, not going to work. If you are, get an entry in. Uh, it might be one of those that we examine or use and talk about tonight when apparently we're on, uh, he and I are doing a, a small bit, I think somewhere between um, 7.30 and 8.30. I'm not exactly, exactly sure of the time, but that opportunity is still available to you. Rube party tonight, beginning on location at the Forgotten Star Brewing, is it at 5.00? Doors open at 5. Doors open at 5 yep. p.m. tonight. Obviously, uh, we'll be on the air here till. well, the show will be on till 6.30. We will be out live at 6 o'clock because it is the Summer Hour series that will continue this afternoon with a replay of part of our conversation with Gerald Posner, the award-winning investigative reporter slash author as well. Bradshaw and Brian KFN text line is open 64686. If you're not familiar with the program, my name is uh, Dan Barrero. I am the host of the show, former Inkstain Wretch, newspaper, The Twin Cities. I've already um, reintroduced Brett Blakemore, who is uh, on with me on uh, Sunday. Will you be in this Sunday as well? Yes, sir. Okay, Sunday sermons, which, which might largely be, well, uh, is Sunday, is Saturdays with Sauce on this week, you know? Uh, Saturdays with Ben Gessling this week. No kidding. Me and Ben Gessling. Oh, no, football outstanding. Talk. Well, I was going to say is that might be, um, unless you guys get into it, the Sunday Sermon Show might be the first chance to get in-depth into whatever controversies take place tonight. A look back, a review at Rube Party 2024. That could be part of the festivities on uh, on Sunday. Did I call you, did I just call you Blake Brettmore? Yeah, you might have. Did I seriously call yeah, you Blake I Brettmore? I kind of like that better. Would you prefer Blake Brettmore? Or Brett Blakemore. I, I think I'd like my real name better, but it, it's the, it, we're to the point where let's just keep it rolling. I I just let it. I, I'll fall be honest off with you. I think point. nationally, for a career, <laughs> I think Blake Brettmore might get you further. Well, I'm just saying. I don't yeah. know. It's something to think about for All sure. Right. I'll consider it. It's up to you. Um, let's see. Where do we begin today? Well, we do have a very good guest lineup uh, beyond the replay of the Posner interview from earlier. Uh, this week, we have several live guests scheduled for today as well. Our old friend Cato Kalen will join the show. I believe he is in Denver uh, doing some event, which I'm sure he'll tell us about. He's going to join us at 5.30. Why today? Well, last time we had him on, it was pretty serious stuff. It was OJ-related stuff. Today, it's going to be, we're finally, the, the, the Twins are back in action tomorrow, I believe, against the Brewers. Uh, Cato is a huge Milwaukee sports rube. And um, we'll talk to him about his uh, favorite baseball team, 
Maybe some Green Bay Packers talk with him as well. We'll we'll try to keep it light and fun with our our old friend Cato Kalen at five thirty. Um, in addition, Lavelle, the Friday regular, is going to join us a little earlier than usual today. He is scheduled for four oh two Dateline Cooperstown, New York. Cooperstown, New York, where of course um, over the weekend, I think technically Sunday, Joe Maurer, the the baby Jesus, will be officially inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame. So um, we'll get to Laval at 4. And at the bottom of this hour, um, Kyle Potter, tra- our travel guy extraordinaire, will join to talk about the obvious. Um, lots of industries brought to a screeching halt today, perhaps none more so than the travel industry in the wake of a f- apparently faulty software update that uh, literally has wreaked technological havoc all over the United States. Well, not I was going to say the United States of America, all over the world. Um, and we'll get the very latest on uh, transport, you know, obviously mainly airline related headaches and some other aspects to the story. And that, that gets us to exactly uh, why we are all just pawns. I hopeless pawns, a better term. We see, I think this is another one of those examples as we've gotten more information on um, the extent of the outages, so to speak, of just how hopelessly, if we didn't already know it, it's a good vivid reminder of just how hopelessly um, reliant we are on other people, maybe other, maybe maybe machines, maybe a combination of both. To get stuff done that we find, you know, these are just now routine aspects of how we go about our day. And there's a part of me that says, wow, this is a good reminder, sobering reminder. But I'm not sure there's anything we can really do with it. Like, how many people, as a result of seeing how reliant we are and how hopeless, that, that we are indeed hopeless pawns, will go Unabomber on the bit and retreat to some shack in Montana to say, I'm not going to rely on any of this nonsense anymore. I'm not going to, I'm not, I don't, I don't need computers. I don't need all the things that we associate with living day to day. I don't need cell phones. I don't need any of this stuff. I don't need to travel anywhere. I'll just be there and I'll stay there forever. Um, I don't even see, I'm not a great technological mind at all. That's not, I don't think a function of age. I, I, it's not, I'm a fraud because I use all the stuff. I love the conveniences of all the stuff. I'm just not interested in how the sausage is made. And maybe that's part of the problem. Maybe I need to learn more about how, maybe I could get some help from the audience. Bradshaw and Brian Cafe and text line. Cause we got some nerdy people out there who know technology, technology stuff. Six, four, six, eight, six on how we are in this situation. Do we blame it all on the cybersecurity firm CrowdStrike? Are you familiar with CrowdStrike, or were you before today? I'm not, no. They apparently are the cybersecurity firm that is at the the heart of this thing. What I, I guess what I, well, I'll just read you the lead to the Associated Press Roundup. This is an updated story from just a couple of hours ago. A faulty software update caused technological havoc worldwide on Friday, grounding flights, knocking media outlets offline, and disrupting hospitals, small businesses, and government offices. The breadth of the outages highlighted the fragility of a digitized world dependent on just a few providers for key computing service. And apparently one of those providers is... CrowdStrike, or at least they're 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 I assume they're there to um, ward off hackers or cyber attackers, right? And that's the irony here. They're saying, "Well, no, this isn't about hacking. We weren't hacked. We weren't cyber attacked. We just didn't flick the switch at the right moment, or there's something faulty in the software, and all hell has." apparently broken loose. Businesses and governments worldwide experienced hours-long disruptions 
computer monitors monitors gro- glowing blue with error messages. Do all computers glow blue? Is that the color? Is it always blue? Like the screen of death, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Is that what they say? And they they scramble to deal with the fallout. Thousands of flights canceled, tens of thousands delayed, leading to long lines at the airports, including here. And, and I'm sure at the bottom of the hour, Kyle will give us an update on whether things are indeed getting any better. A lot of local TV stations couldn't air the news Friday. I guess I, I was a bit gobsmacked. I didn't realize, I, it would never have occurred to me intuitively that, well, stuff that airports use to keep the, the air system going might well also prevent a local TV station from doing getting to the news. Did you? I never put those things together at all. Uh, Microsoft, it, th- this this deal affected customers running Microsoft Windows. Do we run Microsoft Windows here? I believe so. But we, as far as I know, did we have we did not have any of these major challenges. Is that correct? Working fine for me. Have they tried unplugging it and plugging it back well, in? That's an idea we're thinking about. Uh, are we putting a grand in anybody's hand today? We are. Let's yeah. go ahead and do it. The fan at BigDeck.com want to give you a shot to put a grand in your hand at the National Cash Contest. Head to KFAN.com and the keyword money for this hour. The keyword money, KFAN.com, keyword money. Uh, back, as I said, more on this story. A lot more ground to cover before we're done. And a very good guest lineup as well. Don't go away. Is the room party on air tonight? Do you know the answer to that question? So, Is it just the red carpet portion so the just the red carpet portion from 6 30 to 7 is on air okay um but after that gotta be there gotta be there to uh participate and um we're expecting i think last estimate i heard was between nine and ten thousand people is to show up right? yeah it's gonna be big in other words like a power trip state fair appearance basically <laughs> no different right somewhere in that range so unfortunately yeah, or fortunately, maybe maybe it'll be the um, the thing that prompts you to make the trip. That might work. We will talk um, Trump acceptance speech probably after Travel Guy, but uh, the short version for me was, and I don't think some of my uh, righty friends appreciated my analysis that. Um, what would my headline be? Probably something like he just can't help himself. Because we had all these predictions of new guy. Had a harrowing experience, which I don't discount in any way, shape, or form. Doesn't get much more harrowing than what he endured last Saturday. You watch. There's going to be stuff in here that you've never heard from Donald J. Trump before. And early, you could say, especially when he was talking about his recollections of the attack, it didn't feel like classic Trumpian stuff. But then something allegedly happened to the teleprompter. I think it froze. Then he had to riff a little bit. And then I don't know if then it just put him in another place or even later, once the teleprompter was going again, He had some of the red meat stuff in his speech anyway. He just hadn't gotten to it yet. But whatever it was, it ended up being, oh, my God, nothing has changed. Nothing. It's the same old shtick. It's the same old rhetoric. It plays well in the hall. It plays well to his constituents. By the way, it might be enough for him to win because of what's going on on the other party. But... um, there, I, I had a couple head shaking moments where I said, God, we've heard this over and over and over again. And it did go on over and over and over. He, he broke his own record for a, an acceptance speech for either party. I think it clocked in at 90, was it 92 minutes? What's one hour, 32 minutes? Is that um, 92? Yep. Even I got that right. Um, which I think shattered his own previous record as well. The uh, the great irony, I think, also, if I'm putting another headline on the convention, is that the weakest part of what up until then was a highly fine, it was fine-tuned 
well-organized, tight production was when he got out there last night. That was the weakest part of the entire, was it three days, whatever number of days that it is. More on that later. As I said, I'm sure I'll get great agreement. I would say to the righties whose feelings were hurt last night, who responded to me, there were, I guess this is impossible in 2024. You can be, I think you should be capable of evaluating, evaluating a speech, performance, whatever you want to call it, regardless of whether you support the candidate. In other words, you could think, and because I, I read a lot of Republicans who aren't necessarily anti-Trump or not vir- violently opposed to him, but they said, too long. What are you doing? You had it going, and then you, you lost the thread. And so for me last night, it was I was simply trying to do a review of it as a performance, whether it hit the mark. Or it didn't hit the mark. But if you're partisan enough, if you're all sharks all the time, all jets all the time, you can't, you're not, you're incapable of separating what you think of the candidate from the performance itself. It's part of why I think we have, we, we live in the silos that unfortunately uh, we ever do. Um, where were we? Oh, some good texts have come in regarding the degree to which we are prisoner to all this modern technology, one could say. Um, Dan, today's events are a reminder of how vulnerable we are without technology, although not confirmed. This was a simulation of what could be. We're at risk. I was at the airport this a.m. at seven this morning at seven a.m. getting ready to fly to a lacrosse tournament for the weekend. Luckily. I travel for work and have resources to avoid the crowds. We got to our gate without issue, but once we got to our gate, that was when our flight was canceled. We should wake up to the simulation of uh, disruption. Well, I, and I would say the concern I have, I mean, the, the inconvenience is dramatic, right? If you're going to the airport, I get that. I'm not diminishing that. Um, a TV station not able to deliver the news. But I, I have greater concerns uh, regarding even more important things paralyzing us that might come to a screeching halt because apparently it's all part in many cases of, of the same uh, technology as well. Um, Golden retriever guy writes, Microsoft is selling the cloud pipe dream, promising money saved, no capital investment or small capital investments. Execs, execs love saving money. Us geeks know this will not stay safer or have better uptime. It was only a matter of time. I don't even understand what he said. That's how geeky he is and how non-geeky I am. Do you understand what he's saying? Is Eh. he saying, so what's, what, so Microsoft, was that what, is that what the update was about? And that's what went pear-shaped? I think he's just saying that the whole idea of the cloud itself is a pipe dream, Uh, but I I don't know. It's, I'm, I'm spitballing here. Yeah, the cloud is um, a great term because it it sounds lofty, no pun intended, (laughs) but Maybe it's a little bit more complicated than we uh, thought. Nordo said earlier, your computers are fine because they haven't been updated in years. Wow. That's vicious. Just tried to fuel up at my local gas station. Cash only, no credit or debit for anything. The, the sobering reminder it's given me is how vulnerable many of our key tech systems are to sabotage and terrorism. Exactly. I'm a lunatic liberal, but we desperately need to update things like our electrical grid for security purposes. That's Luke Fickle guy. Uh, Willow Mark Rosen's cat writes, not going to lie, retreating to a Montana shack for the rest of 2024 and raw dogging the rest of the year sounds pretty nice right about now he That's might have deep for a cat. It is, and he and he might have several outstanding points in there as well. Not gonna not gonna lie. Um, dependency on technology is a sign the universal basic income won't work. Can't rely on government for that because they can take it away if we don't follow any crazy new rules. That sounds a little paranoid to me, but that's just me. Um, yeah, keep them coming. I I I. There's a lot. 
Again, I don't even know what I could do with the information, but we've had, you know, every once in a while, we've got big shot names who come down from on high, wherever they, maybe in Montana, maybe they hang in Montana, and they say, boys and girls, <laughs> we're asking for trouble. We're too dependent on all this stuff. And, and in some cases, these are, these are pretty significant services. Some of them even having to do with our protection. And we don't even understand how vulnerable they are. And I think we tend to sort of like chuckle. And, and even if we believe it, we don't really know what to do with it because we, we don't, we're, we're the hopeless pawns. We, we don't understand it. And you hope that, all right, maybe we'll get lucky and the bad guys won't figure it out. Or maybe there are smarter minds working on this around the clock all the time. We're going to have answers. But I think part of it, for me, we talked about it yesterday. That the, You know, I got another one of those, one of your passwords has been compromised. Big data breach. They know everything about you. You know, they got probably social security. They've got, you know, password. They got everything. And I probably didn't respond Im- Im- immediately the way I should because I feel like every other day, one company or another that I'm tied to or that most of us are tied to, there's another breach. We apologize. We're, we're doing our best to rectify the situation. And you just reach a point and say, well, my assumption is it's, we're all on borrowed time when it comes to security, unfortunately. Um, we'll get the aviation side, the transportation side of this story uh, from our good friend uh, Kyle Potter, thrifty traveler guy. That, if you have questions for him, by the way, especially air travel, maybe you're at the airport right now stuck. Text us, 64686, the Bradshaw and Bryant KFN text line on Rube Party Friday, right here in the fan. No. Kyle Potter uh, has become our go-to guy when it comes to uh, travel issues. Uh, he is, of course, uh, he runs the very successful, outstanding Thrifty Traveler site. Uh, we'll get some details on um, what kind of deals they might be running in that regard. In terms of what information... Very, very valuable information for those of you who, who travel a decent amount might be interested in. He's joining us via the Connecticut Water Systems Hotline. I assume it's been a pretty, pretty busy day for you. So I want to work backwards. I, I want to eventually get to the madness earlier in the day. But give us an update based on what you know, the folks you've been surveying about, for example, what the uh, situation is at uh, the airport, uh, Minneapolis-St. Paul Airport right now. Yeah, well, let me put it this way, Dan. Um, I live right under one of the main flight paths um, of the airport, and today has been the quietest day Hmm. that I can remember, Um, which I think just goes to show you just how much airlines are hurting right now in struggling to get planes on and off the ground. And you know, they basically just had to, uh, you know, MacGyver a manual setup to keep the airline running when it should be computers that are doing this. And that takes a lot of time, and that means a lot of delays and a lot of cancellations and a lot fewer flights coming in and out of the airport. And I, would, I will add, you know, we're certainly seeing a lot of it here in Minneapolis. We're seeing it across the country and, and even in some pockets um, across the globe. Wow. Yeah. So... Um, you know, already a bunch of questions have, have, have been filed via the, the text line, and they're all kind of a variation of the same thing, and it's the obvious. Uh, I'll give you an example from a 651 guy. I've got a, I'm have got part of a small group. We're supposed to fly out of MSP this evening to Dublin. Flight canceled. Hotels, car rental, plus airfare. What is our recourse with the airline? So how are the airlines, in this case, obviously, more probably most notably here, Delta, um, does their flexibility, their willingness to move things around without penalties, does that all get waived at a time like this? Is it not that simple? What's the what's the, the, the best advice you have for folks who have already had flights canceled and they're trying to figure out how to, you know, go from here? Yeah, you know, there's there's really two two parts to this equation. First and, and probably most importantly is the flights. And you know, fortunately Delta and other airlines who are struggling so much today have issued um, waivers that allow people to rebook flights, you know, basically within the next six or seven days without any penalty. So you're not paying additional fees. You're not um, paying any fair difference to, you know, say, depart on uh, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, whenever. Um, I think Delta's waiver runs through next Wednesday. So there's there's a good chunk of flexibility there. But, you know, as the 651 guy mentioned, that's, that is 
half of the equation is yeah. that. Um, and then you start getting into the rest of your trip once you land. And so, you know, recouping the cost for hotels and rental cars and excursions and all the other stuff. And that is, is a big question. And I'm going to guess that, um, you know, airlines are going to leave it to travelers to figure that out for themselves. That they're not going to step in and, yeah. and help cover the cost because this was out of their hands, which which I understand. Mm-hmm. You know, it it is not Delta's nor Americans nor United's, and go down the list. It's not their fault that this system went down, and it's just kind of a coincidence that it affects almost every major airline <laughs> in the country. So, Maya, um, well, go ahead. I'm sorry. I, yeah, you know, I was just going to say this is where you know recouping those those loss that sunk money. This is where travel insurance can really shine. You know, it it is not a silver bullet for Mm -hmm. all things that can go wrong with travel, but, you know, uh, covering additional hotel nights or missing out on on some of the things that you've booked. In some cases, not all, you really have to read the fine print, but in some cases, this is where you can recoup some of your losses with travel insurance. So is it safe for me to assume that the technological glitch has been rectified by now, but in the case of air travel, it's the old, how does the system catch up? That that obviously each canceled flight that, that then does not move a plane from point A to point B, where it's supposed to be at a given time, then is going to affect that flight, and it's about how you get the system close to back to the place where you were at the start of the, before this whole thing started. You know, I don't, I don't want to speak out of turn here because I don't know exactly where airline systems are at right now. And it might vary from airline to airline. It might, it honestly, it might vary from airport to airport and from desk to desk. Um, you know, while the underlying problem by now, I, w- I would assume has been fixed. I know they were close as of this morning. Um, there, there's a difference between, you know, this, this underlying cybersecurity system pushing this change live. Yeah. And that getting implemented across all of the, you know, probably thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of computer terminals and backend systems and servers and, and everything that it takes to actually run the airline, um, whether that is back up and running. So I think that's, that's the big question right now. And then once, once we get to that point, if we're not there already, then definitely we get to the, get to the part of basically just trying to play catch up after you know, at this point, 12 hours of, of having planes on the ground, that is a tough spot to be in. And that's, you know, why I would say I feel pretty comfortable saying we're going to continue seeing problems in Minneapolis and across the country tomorrow. And, and whether this is fixed by Sunday or even bleeds into next week is an open question right now. So the irony here, as I understand it, is um, CrowdStrike is a cybersecurity firm, and we've gotten endless warnings from experts who, who probably feel like they're being ignored because they, they yell this stuff out day after day after day that we're, we're, there, there's so many possibilities when it comes to hacking and cyber attacks that could bring us all down to a, to a screeching halt. But in this case, it was an update, which presumably is supposed to enhance those security issues that that ends up nailing us here because they the crowd strike people are saying I I'm gonna, I I think I'm taking it at their word that this wasn't a hack this wasn't a cyber attack it simply was trouble with the update now I know you're not you know in charge of technology and I don't even know how well you understand it I'm sure better than I do but that's the irony here is it not that a cybersecurity firm that's supposed to be about safeguarding um, all these systems as much as is possible from hacking and cyber attacks ends up being everybody's uh, worst enemy. You know, I, I kind of got to stay in my lane here. Um, I don't, I'm going to sound like an idiot on your radio station. Well, I, I do that every day. Yeah. The intricacies of how this works. But you know, what I do know is, is airlines and just how unbelievably complex running an airline is and that it's, you know, really a miracle Every time a plane takes off and lands, um, you know, with all of the digital signals that need to go through to make that happen, with all of, you know, checking passengers in, getting them on the plane, making sure people are on the plane that are supposed to be there, making sure people who aren't supposed to be there haven't boarded. Um, And this happens thousands of times every single day. But at the end of the day, all it takes is for one small thing to go wrong for the wheels to start to come off. 
And so, you know, when I saw this, you know, first thing waking up this morning, I immediately thought back to, uh, it was January, 2023. It was the, the largest, uh, federal aviation administration system outage uh-huh. since nine 11. And that brought the entire you know, United States aviation system to a halt because of one like patch file update that went wrong. <laughs> Um, overnight, um, in early January of 2023. So again, we see just how fragile, you know, not just our, you know, our aviation system can be, but, you know, our entire digital lives, right? Because this is so much bigger than just getting yeah. planes on and off the ground on time. This is, you know, going to Starbucks and buying a coffee. It's going to grocery stores are affected, insurers, banks. It's, it's all over the place and it takes everything working in conjunction. I am shocked that something to this magnitude has not happened earlier. Yeah, I think that, that probably is the story. You're, you're exactly right, that it, it doesn't happen more often than it does. And I think in certain places it also, there were issues in court, motor vehicle departments, unemployment agencies, hospitals in a few cases. Now, I don't know if that hospital part had more to do with just, you know, patient visits, but I'm told it also, according to the Associated Press Roundup, included even canceling some surgeries as well. Now, hopefully those would not be, you know, emergency sorts of surgeries, but um, it, it it is a reminder just how dependent we are. Kyle Potter is the editor of Thrifty Traveler uh, joining us on The Fan, and as I mentioned, if you have uh, uh, specific questions for him, hit the Bradshaw and Bryant KFAN text line, which is uh, 646 646- Eight six. Um, we ha- we haven't the last couple times we've had you on. I don't know, I don't think we've discussed this, but in general, how with this is the, now the background, the context. How healthy or how much healthier is the airline industry than it was? You know, in the worst periods of time, obviously uh, during COVID, etc. Are we vastly improved? Are we still extremely vulnerable to the point where even this kind of thing, if it if it affects, let's say, a 48 to 72 hours, has some meaningful impact? Where is the uh, industry in general? You know, the good news is, is that we're in a much, much better place than we were you know, just a year, certainly two years ago when it felt like you couldn't go you know, a month, maybe even a couple of weeks without hearing about airline X, Y, and Z melting down. That We haven't seen a repeat of that, and we haven't seen a repeat of that with the backdrop of, um, oh, by the way, travel demand is as high as it's ever been. You know, we we crossed over 3 million daily passengers in the United States for the first time over the 4th of July weekend, and 10 of 10 of the busiest travel days in United States history has fallen within the last two months alone. Travel demand is sky high, never been higher, and airlines have clearly figured things out with staffing, probably more importantly with training and right-sizing their operations to cope with that. Now, today is is a weird one. Um, Today is huge. I mean, today is going to be probably one of, if not the biggest, uh, days of disruptions in travel that we've seen certainly in in my last five plus, plus years of covering this industry, but this is you know I I trust we will come to view it as an anomaly. This is just something went wrong that was out of the airline's hands, um, and you know in some ways I'm sure the airlines while they certainly don't want to be in this position today, just like no traveler who's stuck in the airport for eight hours does, but uh, I would bet they're grateful that this didn't happen a year ago when. Travelers were much more attuned to just how much airlines were struggling to keep up with demand and, that, and how much they were over-promising and under-delivering. I think through the combination of just time and, you know, candidly, pressure from the Biden administration that they were going to really start to crack down if airlines didn't get their act together. Um, you know, they've gotten to a place where they can, you know, absent a hiccup like today, they can get people from point A to point B on time with a, with a handful of exceptions. Let's go through, uh, you have a, a, you had a really useful thread, I think, that you filed a couple of hours ago on your X account. Let, let's go through some of those items that might help people who are stuck right now or trying to figure out um, 
what they need to know or what their best strategy would be. And and the first one you mentioned is to not just use or not just pay attention to what you get via app and or email regarding your own, you know, an individual's own flight, et cetera. You say those can be useful, but they might at a time like this be incomplete. So where else do they need to go? You know, I, I think the biggest thing right now when it still is such a mystery of, of how bad this is going to get and, and how long it's going to extend, um, you know, through the weekend and potentially even further, is just getting a sense of, all right, is my airline caught up yet? So there's a great website, which, you know, anytime, you know, I talk about how many flights have been delayed and canceled, I'm just pulling, you know, the information from flightaware.com. Um, and they've got a live dashboard of, of today of, you know, showing, you know, almost 10,000 flights have been delayed and 2,600 have been canceled. Um, but you can also click over to Saturday and Sunday. And, you know, once the day gets a little bit further, you know, clicking over to the next couple of days and seeing, you know, hey, if I'm flying Delta on, on Saturday and I start to see Delta canceling, you know, hundreds of flights proactively before, you know, the calendar even turns to tomorrow. That to me is a sign that I need to be a little bit more worried than I was just a few hours ago when those numbers weren't showing up. So, you know, in these situations, knowledge is power. And just knowing what to expect and how your airline is faring gives you an advantage where, you know, once it starts to seem like, you know, things aren't going to be in place and running more smoothly tomorrow, then you start thinking about, all right, do I change my flights? Do I book a, a backup flight on another airline? Um, but knowing kind of what the what the landscape looks like for your airline is is something that you know is really critical. And, it's, and candidly, it's something that the airline's not going to tell you. Um, and you know, now more than ever, as you know, there are so many delays and cancellations, and it's based upon, oh, our entire computer system has been down for twelve plus hours they might not be able to send you that email period. You suggest all you mentioned perhaps booking a a backup flight on another airline. And in your thread, you mentioned Southwest has some of the best change and cancellation policies in, in the world where it gets complicated, as you know, is the people out there going, well, that sounds great for me to, you know, book, move my flight, get ahead of it. And maybe just say, I'm not even going to fight this for the next 48 hours. I'm going to book the flight next week. But if you got, you know, big trips involving hotel stays, et cetera, that can be pretty problematic, correct? That's where it, it affects, obviously, more than just your flight options, your hotel, your other travel arrangements, et cetera. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's where, you know, flexibility is, is as much as you can be flexible is, is your best friend right now. But not not everybody has that luxury, right? So. You know, being able to, you know, say you're, you're flying out of Minneapolis to Chicago um, on Saturday and you, you're flying Delta or some country and it's starting to look a little bit iffy. Well, in my head, I'm thinking, what other airline can get me there um, that I feel is going to be more reliable right now um, and looking ahead through the weekend? And, and Southwest is one of them. And Southwest does fly nonstop from Minneapolis to Chicago. Um, so, you know, looking at airlines that aren't uh, nearly, if at all, affected by this outage and figuring out if they can get you where you need to go and and booking them and preferably on an airline where, hey, if if Saturday rolls around and that Delta or Sun Country flight is still good to go, great. You can just cancel that flight. Um, A couple of advantages with Southwest, any flight you book with Southwest, doesn't matter what kind of fare it is, you can cancel and get a voucher no matter what. As long as you cancel, I think, like, 10 minutes before departure. But Southwest also um, honors uh, the the federal 24-hour rule, um, which is a federal law that requires airlines um, in in almost every case to actually refund you the money of a flight you booked as long as you cancel within 24 hours of booking. Now, there's a card note for most airlines that says you only have to, um, you know, honor that policy if, if if customers book seven plus days in advance. Mm. And and a lot of airlines take advantage of that leeway and won't um, honor the 24 hour rule for people who are booking last minute, but Southwest isn't one of them. So if I, again, if I'm on this Saturday, the Chicago example, and I'm flying Delta, I could book a Southwest ticket today, um, a backup, 
you know, flying from Minneapolis to Chicago on Saturday. And if Saturday rolls around and I get to the airport and my Delta flight is good to go and everything's running smoothly, I can actually cancel that Southwest ticket and get my money back, not just a voucher. Mm. Well, you and you point out in this thread, it is always helpful to tr- to, to know your rights because it can be very intimidating for a lot of people, this whole process when you're dealing with the you know, the bureaucracy of the airlines that no matter the reason you're entitled to a full refund, if the airline cancels or significantly delays your flight, not just a voucher, correct? Which is huge, you know, especially in this kind of situation that we're talking about. So, you know, if you're, if you're headed somewhere this weekend and, and things aren't looking good and it's not somewhere you need to be, um, you can, you know, plan the trip for next weekend, next month, next summer. You cancel that trip once uh, you cancel that full reservation and then you get your money back and airlines cannot stick you with with just a, a voucher, which is which is huge. It's also huge in that same situation we just talked about booking a backup flight because, you know, if I'm booking a backup flight with Southwest. Um, Kyle, it, 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 sorry, if, if I'm booking that uh, backup flight with Southwest. Sure. Um, that's that's probably going to cost a lot booking the day before. So at the very least, if you do need to get there, um, getting your money back from that initial flight that you booked that got canceled, that's going to at least solve some of the pain. Uh, by the way, um, a couple texts real quick before we wrap things up with with Kyle Potter, Lavelle from Cooperstown, New York, and uh, preparing for the Joe Maurer Hall of Fame induction over the weekend. Uh, that will be coming up. The uh, texter, uh, I don't have a name here, just uh, an area code, 507. MSP has long been known as one of the top airports in the nation, if not the top. However, a recent Star Tribune article pointed out that there will be a large construction and expansion project that could derail lines and cause a lot of headaches. Does your guest feel this will hurt MSP's uh, reputation? And I would add just, you know, what have you heard about just how big those headaches, how challenging and difficult that's going to be and how long that's going to go on? You know, the reality is, is that projects like this are happening all the time. Um, and that is that is a piece of how you remain one of the best rated airlines or one of the best rated airports in the country. Um, it doesn't happen by accident. It takes money. It takes time and it takes construction to keep up with the times, to make new improvements, to expand based upon, you know, the number of passengers that are moving through the airport. Um, So, you know, there's going to be some unpleasantness, but there always is. So right now at at Minneapolis, they have a runway, one of their main runways shut down, and it will be shut down all summer. But they need that runway to be at 100%. So they have to make a choice. And, you know, from my perspective, I think they've done a great job at balancing you know, the need for infrastructure improvement, um, the need for, you know, better looking concourses, more gate space, the need eventually to expand, um, you know, the, uh, the customs and border protection screening area because there are more international flights flying into Minneapolis than ever before. And there's probably more international um, passengers flying into Minneapolis than the airport can really handle right now. You got to do these things at a certain point. Yeah. And, you know, like I said, Minneapolis and, and really most airports are doing projects like this, um, you know, on a yearly basis. Um, I think they've done a great job at, at balancing the need to do it without disrupting customers. Is there going to be some unpleasantness from time to time? Absolutely. But that's unavoidable. And the trade off is that, you know, Minneapolis is going to continue to be one of the best airports in the country. Last item uh, from Steve in River Falls. He's asking whether you know if Amtrak has also been affected by all this today. There's uh, the new train to Chicago that's an option for for some people. Have you heard anything about how train travel, or uh, particularly Amtrak in this case, has been affected? You know what, Steve, that's a great question. And I have just been down the rabbit hole on airlines. I didn't even think to look at Amtrak. So I guarantee you once I hang up the phone here, I know it's of little use to uh, your listeners, but I'm going to look into that as well. Well, and if you and if you get some info, go ahead and tweet it. And we'll re, we, we will retweet it so Steve sees it and uh, can take a look at it as well. There's plenty of time to get to uh, everything. A great overview as always, my friend. Much appreciated. Much of uh, great value, to, particularly at a time like this. We will be in touch. Thanks, Kyle. Yeah, thanks, Dan.
Kyle Potter is the editor of Thrifty Traveler. It's he's an absolute. I think if you're if you are a big time traveler, and even if tra- even if you don't travel a lot, I would argue uh, you got to follow this guy, K. Potter, P O T T E R M N, and um, Thrifty Traveler has its own uh, Twitter handle as well, which is at Thrifty Traveler, and they do a great job of basically monitoring for you um, deals. You know, uh, incentives, certain situations that they say, and some of it has to do with great, greater good fare. Some of it has to do with a hey, uh, some credit card deals where you can use some miles in some inventive ways. Um, absolutely worth the time if you haven't done it. Well, a uh, shift gears pretty dramatically. I mean, here's the biggest miracle. In all honesty, the biggest miracle is that Lavelle E. Neal the third somehow of all people got out of Minneapolis St. Paul Airport. And is now, I'm assuming, somewhere near the Cooperstown Hall of Fame event. I, I can't believe it. Of all the people, with all the problems he has, just because it's Slavo Bingo, the notion that he got there, he avoided all this nonsense somehow, shocks me. We'll get details from him on his travel schedule and what he expects to hear later uh, during the weekend from Joe Maurer, who will be inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame. That's next.